Hey, Mark Walters here. Welcome to the Legacy Fuel Show, where you get fun ways to make money so you can catch up financially and enjoy your life. Today, we have Lee Arnold on the show. Lee is a real estate investor, developer, trainer, international speaker, and best-selling author. He spent years perfecting the real estate investing and private money lending process as CEO of several multi-million dollar enterprises and the chairman of several private equity funds Lee has facilitated billions of dollars in real estate transactions across the country as a buyer, a lender, and a consultant. His current success is the result of rebuilding after losing everything in the real estate market crash in 2008, and so many people can relate with that. Prompted by that experience, he and his wife founded He's the Solution Ministries, a global nonprofit that hosts the annual Be Bold for Jesus conference. The conference provides discipleship training to Christian CEOs and followers from all around the world to be bold for Jesus. Plus, I've known Lee and been friends with him for about 20 years. So, Lee, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Mark. Good to see you. You too. Well, you know, we were having some fun before we started recording this, and it's always a joy to be able to share the things that you've got going on there. You offer so many real estate opportunities. I'm just going to rattle this off. I had to write this down, Lee. So people can step into things that you've got from mortgage notes that people can invest in, turnkey rental properties that are professionally managed, and how our listeners can make money offering your funding sources to real estate investors, which as we know, Lee, real estate investors always need funding. So that's a really terrific offer. And you also have the educational products that people need to be able to step into all of these roles. You even list you know, uh, you do like a million dollars a year, at least uh, in listing houses, you do it all. And we're going to get to all of that in just a minute here. And Lee's got something incredibly beneficial for all of you. Absolutely free. It's going to be over at legacyfuel.com forward slash Lee. That is my affiliate link. We'll talk about that in just a second. But before we do, Lee, let's, let's go back in time a little bit. Let's start from the beginning. Where did you grow up? And what was that like? Uh, I grew up in a suburb of Spokane, Washington, the state of Washington, not the District of Columbia, Washington, uh, a, in, a, in a small farming community, uh, Cheney, Washington. Uh, grew up on a little five-acre farm. We did strawberries and hay, and when I wasn't doing that, I was helping all of the other farmers throw their hay. Uh, so it was it was an idyllic uh, growing up. It, it was nice. I enjoyed it. Uh, now, at the time, I didn't think, uh, I couldn't wait to get out of Spokane, right? It was just too small. Uh, but then my wife and I had kids, and we decided to come back. So I've been back in the area since 2009. Uh, but it's been it's been a great childhood, a great area to grow up, and it's been a great area to raise kids. I love it up here. I can imagine. Well, and as I shared with you the last time we were in person, my wife went to college there and has a lot of fond memories there as well. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go back when you just first started in real estate. And again, when we were together before, you shared a great story about your father's suit and real estate. Can you share how you started with that, Lee? Yeah, you know, I was kind of a late bloomer. Uh, so I was, uh, when I graduated high school, I was like five foot, seven inches tall. I'm now six one. So uh, a lot of growth after high school. But I started investing in real estate when I was 18, 19 years of age. And I was still pretty young, you know, baby face, couldn't grow any facial hair. Um, and I was getting into real estate. And one of the books that I read says you need to show up looking professional. Well, I grew up on a farm. I didn't have any suits or clothes like that. So I wore my dad suits to uh, several of my first meetings with prospective clients. And if you've ever seen the movie Big with Tom Hanks, right, that scene where he shrinks back down to the little guy and he's still in that big man suit. That's what I looked like. So imagine you being a homeowner, uh, you got a phone call from this person who says they're gonna pay cash to buy your house, and this little kid in his dad's suit shows up and you're thinking, you're gonna buy my house for $400,000? Yeah, I don't think so. So uh, it was an interesting introduction uh, into the business, but um, here we are, so <laughs> all is well. I, I love that story. I remember you saying showing up to the door in your dad's suit. And I can I can relate because I looked young for so long in my life. And, you know, we have that imposter syndrome when we're first starting. You know, why are people going to listen to us? I'm looking in the mirror thinking the same thing. I could just imagine you confidently going out there with your dad's suit. 
saying all those things. And obviously it was working, the things that you were doing. Well, and I just have to say, Mark, you still look like you're 29 years of age. I, I don't know how old you are, but you still look pretty young. Well, uh, bless you. Bless you. Thank you. I'm going to turn next month as we record this 61 years old. Wow. Gosh. Oh, wow. my gosh. A little, you know, it's uh, antioxidants and hair dye. That is, and rock and roll. That is the secret. And M&Ms. No brown ones for anybody and that's a Van Halen fan. Hair dye, rock and roll, and brown M&Ms. That's, yeah. that's the secret to youth. That that could very well be. I'm still in the documentation stage of all this. I'll get back to you. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's funny. So when we were together also, because I want people to understand that you're not just a real estate investor. You're not just a real estate educator. You have several companies that in your graph of companies, you've got several legs of companies. So we've got the real estate investing side and many different legs that go down from that. And the actual doing it and then actually teaching it. And then you've got the funding side. And I remember when we were together before, Lee, you were talking about going to Wall Street, talking to some of those people. They were interested in your funds. And then you realized the zeros they were talking about, they were different from the zeros you were thinking. Share with people what you were talking about there. And then we can go into what you're doing with this fund now to help investors and people make money with it. Okay. Yeah. So I want to go back in time. Uh, as I said, I flipped my first house in 1996 and started growing and scaling from there. And I started doing private money lending back in 2001. Well, I started out by brokering private money. Uh, and then as my own personal uh, cash got built up, I started lending my own money. And then I was leveraging my rental portfolio to lend more money. And then 2008 came and what I learned is the first loan that an investor is going to default on is the loan that isn't their primary residence. So all of these loans that I put out there were defaulting. So I had to clean up that mess coming out of 2008 and nine. And I, I pretty much lost everything, Mark. I mean, I was on the verge of bankruptcy in October of 2009. It was it was bad. I mean, I lost everything. Well, the one thing I did not lose was my clients, my customer base. Uh, and we are a nationwide educator, we're a nationwide lender. Uh, and I'm just, you know, trying to make sense of all of the chaos and pandemonium that has occurred in the last 18 months since the crash in August of eight. Um, and I go back out to my customer base and, and just like you and I are talking here, I was talking with them and I was saying, hey, what do you guys need? What, what do you see happening out there in the markets? And I had two responses. The first response was, Lee, I am seeing deals that I've never seen before. Prices are out of control. They're just, you know, 10 cents on the dollar. And Mark, you're down there in the in Arizona. I remember specifically in Phoenix and Scottsdale, houses selling for 30 and 40 cents on the dollar, what they were at their peak in 2007. It was just, it was crazy, the deals that were out there. So I had clients coming in and saying, Lee, I need money. Can I get money to buy these deals? And I'm thinking, I don't have any. I just lost everything. And then I had another group of people coming to me saying, Lee, you know, I, I got hurt pretty bad in 2008. I still have some cash, but I'm a little leery about what to do with it. What do you think I should do with my money? And I was going, okay, so you have money. You need money. Why don't you guys just come together? And so we started doing what's called tabletop funding. So we would find the borrower, we would underwrite the deal, and then we'd go find an individual investor who would fund that note. And then borrower gets the funding, lender gets capital deployment, and then we would just handle the servicing for them, the collection of payments. So 2009, 10, 11, 12, this is going pretty well. And I thought, hey, we're on to something here. I should go get money from Wall Street because, you know, finding all these individual investors is clunky. And boy, if I could have, you know, 10, 12 million bucks laying around, I could fund these things faster. So I got on the phone, scheduled some appointments. I flew out to Wall Street and I met with some of the largest private equity funds in the world, Fortress, Colony Capital, Ellington, uh, just to name a few. And here's what they told me. They said, Lee, we love what you're doing. We, we understand the value of private money. We understand the value of secured debt against real property. Um, you're just not doing enough volume. And I said, well, I can ratchet up the volume. What do you need? They said, well, we really need you deploying $100 million. I said, no problem. I can do $100 million a year. And they went, no, 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 no. We need you moving $100 million a month. And I went, oh, okay, that's going to take a little bit longer. Uh, the good news about that is I came back with this new vision 
of what we were building and why we were building it. And I thought, how? You know, poor people say, I can't. Rich people say, how can I? That's in Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I said, how can we move a hundred million dollars a month? Because I didn't have the, the, the borrowers coming to me demanding that much capital. And so we created our private money broker program. Uh, and since 2012, we have certified almost 10,000 brokers nationwide uh, to understand what private money lending is, how it works, what a good deal looks like, how to underwrite a file, and we have them bringing those deals to us, and now we're funding those and then paying the broker for bringing that business to us. The nice thing for the brokers is we only lend to real estate investors. We don't lend to owner-occupants. Uh, an owner-occupant buys a house every, th every seven years, and they refinance it every three and a half. So if you are a, a uh, conventional mortgage lender, right, and you're lending to first-time home buyers, you're gonna get two loans from a customer every seven years. However, the average real estate investor flips four houses a year. So in the same seven-year period, you're gonna get 28 loans from one investor borrower where we're here getting two. So it made a lot of sense. So we've seen a lot of our brokers find, you know, investors in their local markets that are doing volume and they're just closing deals after deal after deal after deal. And it's it's like a it's like a vending machine, you know, or a cash machine. It just keeps spitting out cash, uh, which is great for the broker and it's great for us because we're deploying capital uh, and we are on pace to hit the hundred million dollar a month in deployment mark. Wow. That's amazing. Plus, you're helping the investor. And so a lot of people that are uh, following you know, the things that you're doing in your business, they're benefiting in all these ways, including <laughs> the investor who needs funds for fix and flip and different things like that, right? Yep. Well, and there's there's a statistic, I can't quote the source, but and forgive me if I if this is not 100% accurate, but the, the general premise of the statistic is this. Every time an investor buys a house, 28 people get work in that local community. The title company gets work, the local lender gets work, the local contractor gets work, the local subs get work, your painters, your, your uh, material men, your carpet layers, uh, your local real estate agents. 28 people get work when an investor buys a house. So not only are we providing the capital for the individual investor to fulfill their dreams of getting ahead, leaving a legacy, Mark, which I so appreciate that you're doing this and teaching that to people, but we're creating jobs in local communities. Now, if that wasn't enough, we teach people to buy the worst house on the, on the best street. And so we're providing funding to buy houses that at, at the time we fund them are in many cases not even habitable. Uh, in many cases, they're boarded up. Um, sometimes there's there's vagrants and vandals living in there, which is creating a, a a risk for the local neighborhood kids. When we fund that deal and that investor beautifies that property and either rents it out to a, a nice family or sells it to a first or a second time home buyer, that the entire neighborhood goes up in value because of this loan, because of that investor's effort. Uh, I don't know, and I'm not trying, trying to be altruistic here, but I don't know if there's any business or industry where you bless as many people in the real estate investing business than anything else I've ever seen, other than nonprofits, of course. But, I mean, here's a really profitable way to make a lot of money while serving a lot of people. And that's really the heart of our business. Our motto here is we get more of what we want by helping others get more of what they want. So we wanna teach you the kinds of deals that funding is attracted to. We wanna give you the, the tools to go out and get those deals. And then we wanna provide the funding for you to get the deal done and make a profit. So either as an active investor or as a broker who's bringing the investors to us. But there's so many ways to make money, it's really exciting. Yeah, the nice thing of stepping into what you've got there and you've masterfully put it together somebody who's excited about getting started in real estate or even somebody that's doing some things in real estate and they're thinking, well, I'm not sure where to step into these other pieces. I've got this piece. You've got them all right here. So with that in mind, Lee, you've graciously offered some free things and I'll let you explain what they are, but I want people to know you can get $500 off your first loan with Lee, a proof of funds letter up to a million dollars, which is big. I'll let you explain that and your funding tour ticket. And you can get all of that free by using my affiliate link, 
legacyfuel.com forward slash Lee, L-E-E. So what is it? What are the benefits here? Because I know they're huge and I know nobody knows them better than you, Lee. Would you please explain what people are stepping into just by going over to that page and getting free access to this? Yeah, and I want to start with the natural progression or the order that I want all of your listeners to go through. Step number one, I want them to go to fundingtour.com. Okay, so that's where they're when they go to your link, legacyfuel.com forward slash Lee, they're going to be able to sign up for a funding tour. Now, what this is, is it's a virtual class. It's a six hour training. We do it live every Wednesday, every Saturday throughout the month, throughout the year. And we come on and we train you free how to find deals, what a good deal looks like, what the numbers need to look like, how do you negotiate the price with the seller, how do you get it under contract. But to write offers to buy these properties, the seller or the seller's real estate agent, they want to see that you have the financial wherewithal to get the deal closed. They're not going to waste their time with you if, they, if you can't prove that you have any money to get these done. So what most newbie investors are lacking to move forward is a proof of funds letter. So we will issue all of your viewers, Mark, when they when they go to that link, we will give every single one of them pre-qualified because they're listening to you, they're following you. I'm going to give them a pre-approval letter for up to a million dollars in capital that they can use to go out and do their first deal, their second deal, their 10th deal. I don't care, but I will pre-approve you for a million dollars to go out and start writing some offers. Now, when you get that deal under contract and it's time for you to close that deal, I am one of a thousand nationwide private money lenders, right? So being a nationwide private money lender, it sounds really cool when you say it, but there's a lot of us out there. So in an effort to get you to do business with us, I'm going to take $500 off the closing costs when you do your first deal with our company, uh, just as a way of saying thank you for getting into the game, doing your next deal. Uh, for listening to Mark and following what he's doing. Uh, but we would like to do business with you as a client uh, for a lot of years. I, I'm very blessed. I was just talking with a group yesterday, uh, and there were people in that room that have been with me and borrowing and lending with us for the last 15, 18 years. And it's really rewarding to see that longevity as a result of what we do. You know, I, I, I'm in the real estate education business and I came from that world. I, I got involved in real estate by going to a free seminar. I saw an infomercial on TV, and, you know, come down to the Doubletree Hotel and after a two hour pitch, come to the back room and give us all of your money, right? We've probably all been to something like that. Uh, that's how I got into this business. But there was always a fatal flaw in that business. And that was this, when a customer has paid for all of the education that you have to offer, all of the classes and certifications, there's no reason to maintain a relationship with that customer. And so it became very transactional in nature. And so as we were designing this, Mark, and putting, putting all these pieces together, the goal was this. How do I create a company that provides enough value to a client that we can do business together for a year, five years, 10 years, 20 years? And lending has allowed us to do that because, as I mentioned before, the average investor is going to flip four houses a year. Somebody that's doing volume is going to flip 25 to 100 houses a year, and we want to be along with the, on the ride with them for that entire period of time. Uh, so we want to help people achieve wealth actively. But there comes a point in time, Mark, where you just get tired. You know, you look very spry for a 61-year-old, but I've met some 61-year-olds that aren't so spry anymore. And the last thing they want to be doing is going out and fixing and flipping real estate because while profitable, it's a lot of work. And so we created another element within our business where you can invest with us passively. So you can invest in one of our private equity funds, uh, minimum investments, $1,000. You do not have to be accredited to do that. Uh, we offer mortgage notes for sale. As you mentioned, we have turnkey rental properties that we offer in our local market so we can manage them and oversee them. But just again, with, with the client journey, the client experience in mind, how do I create something where I can have a long-term relationship with a customer and, and generate income together? Not because of, but together, because we're both making money as we go along. And that was always the goal. And we're constantly looking for new opportunities, new new ways to, to uh, create efficiencies within businesses. I'm still actively flipping in my own market. Uh, we're flipping 50 to 100 houses a year. 
uh, just depending on market cycles. Uh, we refer to my flipping business as the research and development arm of the organization because what we learn when we're out there flipping in our own market is what goes into our next educational training program because we're, we're decimating or disseminating this information in real time because if I can make you, the investor, better at what you're doing, you're probably going to be able to do more volume. I produce more loans. I deploy more capital. And we get close to that $100 million a month mark. So it, it it's full circle. And that's why we call it, Mark, the circle of wealth. That's when you get involved with our organization, you're stepping into the circle of wealth. It'll start active. It'll go passive. Uh, and then, of course, we follow that up with the ministry component of our business as well. Amazing. Anybody listening right now, Lee, is they've got to be blown away because there's so many pieces that a lot of people just hadn't even thought of, let alone that they can find in one place. So definitely go over to legacyfuel.com forward slash Lee and get what he's offering there for free and then learn more about what he's sharing here. You know, one of the biggest questions I've always gotten, Lee, and I'm guessing you have too, especially from newer investors. And that is, where do I find the money for deals? And here you've got Wall Street saying, hey, we're interested in you. We need you to be doing $100 million a month. So you're actively looking for investors who need money. And that is the solution and the answer to the biggest question. That's where do I find money for deals, right? Right. Yeah. And that was really important for us to put that piece together, Mark, because I, I have worked for education companies that would sell these large packages to their clients. And then when the client went out and found a deal, they would say, okay, I found a deal. Now what do I do? And the instruction was, well, you need to go find a private money lender. Good luck. Right. And there was really no instruction beyond that. But uh, there, there's there's two of the biggest investments that a person will make in their lifetime. The first one is their primary residence. Uh, for, for the majority of people, that is the biggest purchase they will ever make. But for those that step into the investment world, the second biggest purchase they're going to make is that first investment property. And it's scary. I mean, I, I remember doing my first deal when I was 18 years old. It was only $35,000. It was a little tiny shack of a house, a little one bedroom, one bath house. And it was scary, you know? But now the average mean and price point of a house, I mean, the average loan we're writing is 225000 that's a long ways away from 35 grand. So we we want to take that customer experience and, and and hold their hand through it because we've been there. We we know what they're dealing with emotionally and, and we want to support them all the way through because if, if they can have a great experience and a profitable experience, you know, I've never met anybody that's, that just made $50,000 in cash and said, gee, that was fun. I never want to do that again. Uh, <laughs> it, if they have a great experience, they're going to do it again. And we want to be there to provide funding for them every time they, they take on a new deal, a new opportunity. And whether that be single family, fix and flip, multifamily, we provide funding for all of that. Yeah. And I can understand why you want to educate people so they understand how to get into the game and understand your criteria to be able to do and run the business from the funding side so that it's a win-win. And I know that a lot of people that deal with you and get excited over your circle and your funding in particular as an investor is one of the offers that is for them to be able to get up to 100% financing for some of their deals. Would you please explain that? Because I know it's got a lot of people excited as well. Yeah. Well, most people don't realize because when you go to a private money lender's website, you can even go to my website and, and look at our, our loan structure and our loan terms. And what you're going to see there is that, you know, we'll end up to 65% LTV, 70% LTV, 75% LTV. And so for the person who's never done this before, the uneducated investor consumer, they look at that and go, okay, well, that means I have to have 25% down. So if I'm going to buy a four hundred thousand dollar house, I'm going to I need a hundred grand to do that deal. No, you don't, and that's that's where education really helps because you can structure the deal in such a way where you can get seventy five percent from this lender, you can get twenty five percent from this lender, and you can get ten percent from this lender, and this is what we call a capital stack or a debt stack. Uh, which is a term that's very, very common in commercial real estate. We don't hear it a lot in the residential side, but you can create a debt stack on a deal where you can literally overfund it to the point where you don't bring any cash to closing at all. We teach our clients how to go to closing and leave with a check 
Uh, we just funded a deal last week where the person brought no money to closing and they left with a check for $8,000. How, how do you do that, right? Well, it's all in the structure. How do you structure the deal? But buying real estate with no money down, I mean, it's 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 been around for years, you know, going back to Bob Allen in the late 70s, early 80s when he wrote that book. Uh, what was it? Zero down real estate or something like that. That's that's not some magic trick. It, it's simply about knowing how to go into the deal and structure it in a way that you don't need cash to buy real estate and you don't need good credit. Right. All of the things that they told us we needed, you don't. You just have to structure it the right way. And that's what we teach in our trainings. Exactly. And a lot of times when we are buying a house that we're having to qualify for over 30 years or 15, if somebody wants to go that route, we've got to go through the mill when it comes to qualification. So naturally, that's just what we're thinking when it comes to how we have to qualify for investment property, which isn't the case, like you're saying. And when it comes to people that are listening, thinking, hey, I wouldn't mind buying a house fixing it up, selling it for a profit. You've got money in place for that and criteria set up that they can be following along those lines so they can be putting deals together that can actually qualify for that funding as well, not the traditional routes as if they were to have to go and buy a house that they're right. going to step into, right? Can you explain the difference just a little bit if somebody's wondering the clarity there? Well, yes. Yeah, yeah. So let me explain it with a story. So 1996, I'm working at a grocery store. I'm making $3.90 an hour. I'm paying cash to put myself through college, uh, which I later dropped out of my, my sophomore year. But I'm broke. I mean, I am so broke. Uh, my credit cards are maxed out. I think my credit score at the time was under 500. I had no money. I mean, I was broke as a joke. And I often challenge people in my live trainings to, to give me a story that puts you in a worse financial situation than I was in. And very rarely can somebody beat me as to having the worst story about being broke and penniless and homeless, right? So we try to build all of our programs and our education around me. You know, 27 years ago, that, that broke kid, if he can do it, you can do it, but you got to follow these steps. You got to follow the system. And that's why we call it the Lee Arnold system of real estate investing. One of our, 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 greatest challenges in the education side is reprogramming people to stop thinking conventionally. Because in the absence of education, you only have what you were taught by your parents. Most people did not grow up with wealthy parents. I didn't. Uh, my mom was a stay-at-home mom. My dad was in human resources for 40 years. So we were very, very much on the lower end of middle America. I didn't have mentors to teach me how to invest in real estate. I had to go find them. And so we, we, we built everything that we do around the person that has terrible credit, has no idea what they're doing, and has no money. Because if we can make that person successful, everyone else, it's easy. And that's what we do. We, 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 we structure all of our programs to make that person successful. So for your listeners, Mark, uh, the encouragement that I would offer is this. I don't care how bad your situation is. If you'll just follow the program, just follow the system, you can be buying real estate. You can get yourself out of the financial circumstance. You can go from where you are to millionaire in as short or as long as the period as you want to go. It's absolutely possible. Even in today's market, where everybody says interest rates are too high and there's no inventory and everybody's snatching up deals, that is so false, I can't even begin to tell you. So I want to dispel the myths that are keeping people from advancing and moving forward because all they are, Mark, is myths being told by people who don't want you entering this space because now you've become a competitor to them. That is a very small way of thinking. That is a minimalistic view of the world. Uh, I prefer an abundance outlook. There, there's no shortage of opportunity. It's everywhere. You just got to step in and uh, take advantage of the opportunities with the tools that are available. I love your analogy and example of yourself, your broke self, and then putting that self into the business model of if we can make it work for this person, then anybody who doesn't have it as bad off as that person, their chances are that much smoother. So I love that analogy. Uh, you know, one of the neat things about what you've got going on over there, Lee, is the many different facets. 
that you just went over. And you we touched on it briefly, but I just want people to understand the vastness here to be able to just say, hey, I'm interested in, in buying a rental property that Lee has and stepping into that. So I was over on your website earlier that had those listings and all of the numbers. And it was really exciting to think, I don't have to do a lot of this other stuff if I just, if I have the money and I want to invest in this. So please tell us a little bit about that because it's not what everybody else is doing or sharing. And then also where are some of these deals coming from? Are there any stories that you can share along those lines as well? Yeah. Um, the first real estate investment seminar that I went to, again, this is going back to late 95 and I did my first deal in 96. The, the instructor, this they, they laid out this plan for everybody in the room. And here was their plan. I want you to buy a house, get financing on it, keep it for 30 years as a rental. And on your 31st year, it'll be paid off and you'll own a house free and clear. And if you do that your second year in year 32, you'll own another house free and clear. And if you buy one your third year, you'll own another house free and clear in 33 years. And I'm thinking, well, you know, at the time I'm like 18 years old. So I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, this is great. By the time I'm 48, I'll have 30 properties and I'll start paying them off free and clear. But as I got into this business, I realized some people don't have 30 years, right? I, that's a great strategy, but I can't wait that long. I got to do something now. And so we created our systems around a 24 month plan. So in 24 months, you can be a millionaire. It, it's, it's not that difficult to do, but what we do, we, we, we give our clients two goals. Goal number one, I want you to flip, I want you to wholesale, I don't want you buying and holding anything until you have a, at least $250,000 in cash. Because when you have cash, you can move quickly, right? You can go down to the foreclosure auction, you can buy tax liens and deeds, you can negotiate with for sale by owners, direct to seller, you don't have to worry about somebody writing a check to, to fund your deal, you got cash. And when you have cash, you can move really quick. And so that's goal number one. Goal number two is to get them to become an accredited investor. An accredited investor is somebody who makes over $200,000 a year as a single person or $300,000 as a married person filing jointly, or they have a million dollars in investable assets excluding home equity in their primary residence. Now, why would we want somebody to become an accredited investor? Well, when you become an accredited investor, you fall into a category that represents only 5% of America. So you're in a very good place, but all of the really amazing deals that pay out double digit returns are often reserved for the accredited investor only. And so here's what we tell you. Take the next 24 months to get to a quarter million dollars. Once you've got that, take the next 36 months to get to a million dollars in investable assets. You're now credited. Now you can participate in our private equity funds that are paying out double digit returns for the last 10 years. Uh, you can invest in uh, buying notes, which are paying often 10, 11, 12, 13% rates of return. Uh, but all of these activities give you passive income where you're not actively having to go out and buy and fix and flip or buy rentals and do property management and all of those things. Um, it's just passive. And so for those that are looking towards retirement or looking to slow down, the passive investment opportunities are a great strategy. Now, you mentioned, Mark, turnkey rentals. The reason we started offering turnkey rentals for our clients is they were doing really well in all of these other areas, but they didn't want to buy in the area that they live, right? If you live in Southern California, Austin, Texas, any one of the bureaus, boroughs in New York, you're gonna have almost an impossible time cash flowing on those rental properties without putting a significant amount of cash down. And we looked at our market and said, hey, you know what we have that a lot of markets don't have? We have cash flow. We can buy properties at a price low enough and get a rental income high enough, we can produce cash flow. And we're already buying, fixing, and flipping houses in our market. So why not flip them to our clients who need income, who need tax write-offs? I mean, the, be the, big the best hedge against inflation is real property. But a lot of people don't have time to go out and find the deal, get it fixed up, get a tenant screened and placed in there, do all of the property management. So we said, you know what? We'll do it for you. So you can go to my website, look at the turnkeys we have available, pick one. We'll do all of the, the contracts, we'll handle all the financing, we'll do all of the property management, but you wholly own that asset. 
and you own it in a market that is appreciating, that's cash flowing, you get 100% of the depreciation as opposed to sticking your money in some syndication where you're one of 1,000 investors, it's yours and we'll manage it for you and take care of it for you. Again, just wanting to create opportunities and a simplicity for those that are looking to create wealth. I love it. And proof that you're doing it, like you said, you are deciphering information real time so you can be sharing it with people that are under your umbrella that you're sharing all this with. And then also for those of you that think, oh my gosh, these properties sound amazing because I'm in areas and I've always been that are appreciating and expensive. You hear of other areas that are more affordable, going up in value, they can cash flow. So that's exciting. The fact that there's a tenant in there, it's professionally managed. That is a wonderful opportunity, obviously, to be able to look at and see. And one other thing, Lee, that um, I was thinking as you were sharing some of that, and we've talked uh, about the funding that you have available for investors for themselves, but then there's also the money brokering side of things, which is really exciting when people are stepping into what you have there available for them from an investing side, they can say, well, you know, what? I'd rather be a money broker to the different real estate investors out there that are always scrambling for deals. Or there are people that wear both hats that, that think, hey, you know what? When I'm looking for deals, I've already got the capital that Lee has set up. I know the criteria, but at the same time, when I'm marketing to other people, be it wholesale buyers or rehabbers or things like that, if you then wear the hat of a money brokerer where you can be offering your funds to these people as well, they're dipping into two different, really potentially exciting areas of business, right? Yeah. Well, and what I would what I would encourage everyone to do is to figure out what level of involvement you want to have in your own personal wealth creation or your legacy fuel. Uh, do I want to be actively buying, fixing, and flipping real estate? If so, Coco Capital, Lee Arnold will lend you the money, right? But if you don't want to be doing that, you know, and my parents are pushing 80 years of age, and I can tell you the last thing they want to be doing is managing a construction project and taking on the risk and the liability of real property. But they can very easily put an ad on Craigslist, run a little uh, three-line ad in the local newspaper, post something on Facebook, go into a chat board like uh, Bigger Pockets and say, hey, everybody, my name is so-and-so, and I'm a private money broker. If you need funding on a deal, please call me. I can do fix and flip. I can do D DSCR. I can do buy and hold. I can do commercial multifamily. Right? We just have this whole plethora of, of loan products that are available and they can broker them to all of these people, bring them to us, we'll facilitate the transaction. And then when that deal closes, they get one point, two points, three points in loan origination. So if you think about it, let's take a simple average run of the mill deal, right? $250,000. You can earn two points on a $250,000 loan just by brokering it, not just to us, right? You can broker loans to any lender and they will pay you for bringing them the business. But 2% on a $250,000 loan is five grand. You know, for a lot of people, if they could just do one brokered loan a month and make five grand, that's an extra $60,000 a year. And for a lot of people, that would be transformational, right? A lot of people right now are living paycheck to paycheck. Uh, and usually they have more month left than they have money to live in that month. So they need something on the side. They need something passively. And the thing I love about private money brokering, it's kind of like Uber, right? You can just turn it on when you're ready to go to work. In private money brokering, you want to you want to broker a loan? Post an ad on Craigslist. Put something out on Facebook. Uh, go to an invest an REI club meeting in your local market. Hang out with investors down at the foreclosure auction. They all need money. But they're so busy finding deals and fixing deals and managing construction projects and managing their portfolio of, of rentals, they don't have time to go out and shop for funding. You're going to shop for them. You bring that loan to us. We will help you get it placed. We'll help you get it funded. And you keep the loan origination fees when we close the deal. Everyone wins. So it's a very, very good passive active income uh, where you can turn it on and off as you want. And the thing that I love most about private money brokering is you can do it anywhere in the world. 
So as long as you have a, an internet connection and a telephone, you're in business because you don't have to live in the market where you're brokering. You don't have to be licensed in the, in the state where you live or are brokering the deal. And you don't have to physically be present because rarely do you ever meet the customer other than on Facebook or, or on a Zoom call like this, Mark, uh, or a phone call or an email. So it's all done virtually. So I would say that the greatest majority of our brokers are the close to retirement individual who plans on traveling or wants to travel. Uh, we have a lot of snowbirds that, you know, they live up here in the summer, they live down where you're at, Mark, in the winter, and they just take their computer with them. And the business is mobile because you're not buying any fixed assets, you have no infrastructure internally. It's just relationships, you know, hey, Hey, uh, I need another 300 grand. Can you help me get this funded? Absolutely. Let me get to work. Send it to us. We'll shop it. We'll tell you the terms. You can take it back to your lender. You keep the origination fee. Pretty simple. And that's yeah, why no. I love it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just bringing it back to those people and, and going in between. And you mentioned something that I was going to have a follow up here, Lee, and that is they don't need to be licensed. Can you explain that a bit? Because if somebody's listening, thinking the word brokering, do they have to become a broker? Or is that just a verb as far as what it is they're doing? You've set up everything. How would you explain that to them? Well, I want to make a, a very clear distinction because this is really important, okay? We do not lend to anyone that's going to live in the property. That is what's called a owner-occupied loan. That's what's called a consumer loan. And if you're going to be involved in that business, you have to be licensed as an MLO, a mortgage loan originator, in all 50 states. So if you're lending to the owner-occupant, you absolutely have to be licensed. Now, we don't lend to owner-occupants. We only lend to investors who are buying that property either to fix it and flip it or to fix it and rent it. Now, because it is, and, and we only lend to organizations, we only lend to LLCs or corporations, we don't lend to individuals. Now, the difference in distinction here is, this makes it a commercial loan, not a consumer loan. You don't need to be licensed for a commercial loan. Now, there are five states, California, Nevada, Utah, Vermont, and Minnesota, that even if it's a commercial loan, you have to be a licensed MLO. So we recommend for all of our brokers, just don't run ads in those five states because you can broker loans in the other 45 states, which are actually better states to broker in anyway because the deals are better and there's more money. So in our training, Mark, we teach people which states they can be brokering. And even if you live in California, Utah, Nevada, Vermont, or Minnesota, you can be brokering in the other 45 states without being licensed. And that's the beauty of it. I mean, literally 45 states are open for business for you as a broker, absolutely no license required. Excellent. Thank you for that, that detail, because I know anybody who's excited about this, they might've been thinking of that. Now they understand, hey, the door is open. So we've covered a lot of things here with Lee. And like I said, Lee has put together a package that is free for you, for my listeners here. That's $500 off the first loan with his company, the proof of funds letter up to a million dollars and the funding tour ticket where you're going to learn a lot of this. Plus, once you get the free information, you can then be inquiring about all the other things that we touched on. So definitely use my affiliate link. Go over to legacyfuel.com forward slash Lee, L-E-E. -E. So Lee, you've been so gracious with your time and, and transparent with everything and the fun stories as well. And the beginning times that were a challenge and then you use yourself as the avatar that broke struggling Lee so that you built all of this on top of which I admire greatly. And I wanna thank you for sharing all of this. So before we close, do you have any one last number one tip for our listeners here? Uh, I, I have two. And I know you asked for one, but I didn't give you two. Good. Uh, the first one, uh, I grew up in a non-denominational Christian home, uh, and my parents took us to church every Sunday. My dad was the youth, the youth pastor at our church, uh, and I grew up in church. And I, I'm a born-again Christian. I love the Lord. I've been saved for a lot of years. But when I started making money from the age of 18 until 2008 when I lost everything, 
I had become very backslidden in my relationship with Jesus Christ. And I, I believe that 2008 was his way of getting my attention and saying, do you see what happens when you don't build on the foundation of a relationship with me? And so I learned my lesson. So in 2009, my wife and I started a nonprofit ministry called He's the Solution Ministries. Uh, we put on the Be Bold for Jesus conference, which is the largest um, evangelical conference in the Pacific Northwest every year. Uh, and we built this company on Christ as the foundation. And when you look at our org chart, it actually said God is the CEO. He holds the CEO seat. We gave it to him. And so for those who are... Um, uh, for those who have a relationship with Jesus Christ, let me just encourage you, before you do anything, pray about this. Is this what God would have you to do? Is this the direction he wants you to be going? Don't just haphazardly jump in, only to have him later tell you, no, that's not what I want you to be doing. So for those that are of a similar persuasion, I would encourage you to pray about it. So that's number one. Number two, for everyone, regardless of religious affiliation, don't leave your success in someone else's hands. And what I mean by that is when your only source of income is job and somebody else is signing your paycheck, you are, you are literally handing over your, your entire financial well-being to them. Now, there's nothing wrong with having a job. I, I have many employees, and I love them, and they do an amazing job, and I, I would not be here today without them or their effort, and I, I, I pray that I pay them well and, and, and take care of them. But I am always encouraging them, even as my own employee, to go out and build another stream of income. You know, brokering, broker a loan once a month, make an extra five grand, buy a single rental property, get yourself into your own home. You've got to do something else in addition to job income. Because if you only have one income stream, if you get laid off by your company tomorrow, you're on unemployment. That's 60% of your monthly income. How do you survive on that? So I, I think it's a false economy to think that I'm gonna get rich working for someone else. I, I tell my clients this, your job is the income that pays the bills. What you do on the side and how you manage and steward and shepherd that money is how you build wealth. And most people need both. So you'll never hear me say, hey, you should quit your job and do real estate investing full time. Wrong. Now, if that's, if that's a desire, if that's a pathway you want to go on, we, we have a plan to get you there. But you got to maintain job while you're building this, or you're going to be in a very bad financial situation very quickly, and that's not what we want. So we try to teach responsible wealth creation by giving them plans and processes to follow so that they don't get themselves into a financial situation that's worse than the one they're currently in. Uh, so get a side hustle. Have another income stream, whether it be real estate, whether it be brokering, whether it be, you know, setting up a booth at the fair and selling trinkets. I don't care. But you got to have another method of making money outside of just one income from job. That's all I got, Mark. I love both of those. I love both of those. Thank you so much for sharing that in that order and being so transparent and being my friend all these years. It means a <laughs> lot to me, Lee. Thank you so much for being here with me here today. Thanks for having me, Mark. Every time we talk, I'm like, how... We've how have we I've been doing we've known each other 20 years. That's it's unbelievable. I don't know where the time went, but I, you're timeless. So whatever you're doing, keep it up. You you look fantastic. Bless you, my friend. As do you. And I'm and I'm not convinced that you're still not wearing your dad's suit there. I don't know. Uh, I wasn't there in the beginning, so I'm not sure. I'll have to look at some pictures. Anyway, thank you, Lee. And thank you to our sponsors for helping to make this content free for everyone. Definitely take advantage of what Lee's got waiting for you to step into over at LegacyFuel.com forward slash Lee, L-E-E. -E. That is it for me. Thank you for being here with us today. I'll share more with you on the next Legacy Fuel show. Now is the time to fuel up, make money, and enjoy your life. Hey, Mark Walters here. Thank you so much for being a part of this episode. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe so you don't miss what's coming next. I'm always looking for good things to share with you so we can continue to have fun in this journey together. So if that sounds good to you, let's pick up where we left off and choose another clip so we can get right back to it.